for some analysis of the first Trump picks. Steve Hayes, senior writer for the Weekly Standard. Mara Lyason, national political correspondent of National Public Radio. And Tom Rogan, columnist for National Review and Opportunity Lives. Uh, the president-elect tweeting out today, we'll be working all weekend in choosing the great men and women who will be helping to make America great again. He's in Bedminster, New Jersey, uh, for meetings among them, uh, Mitt Romney, tomorrow. Uh, let's start about these picks today, Sessions, Pompeo, and Flynn. Steve, uh, Pompeo first. Uh, we talked about it yesterday with Devin Nunes, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Uh, he, he brings a long resume to that job. Well, and Nunes is on the executive committee of the transition team. I would imagine that he had some role in pushing Mike Pompeo. Look, Mike Pompeo is one of the brightest members of Congress. He, that's certainly been true in my experience in talking to him and interviewing him and looking at the way that he studies issues. A lot of times you have members of Congress who will read questions or talking points presented to them by their staff and then can't really go beyond those in a hearing. That's not a problem with Pompeo. He knows these issues. He knows them well. He asks the relevant questions, as you saw in, in uh, the package. He's respected by members of both sides of the aisle. Uh, that's, I think that is a, an incredibly solid choice. I would expect he'll have virtually no difficulty uh, getting through. Uh, perhaps some who would be concerned is Iran. Uh, he's got a pretty aggressive Iran view about the president, current president's mm -hmm. policies, uh, as does Lieutenant General Flynn, obviously. Yeah, look, these choices are competent. They are, at least with Flynn and, and Sessions, really loyal to Donald Trump, so he chose mostly from the inner circle. But I do think the orientation to Russia is something that I've heard from Democrats and Republicans are giving people pause. This is definitely Trump's vision that Russia isn't our number one enemy. We should, you know, almost consider them an ally. He's expressed lots of positive feelings about Vladimir Putin. Certainly General Flynn agrees with him on that. Uh, but otherwise, I think they're tough on Iran, they want to make ISIS a top priority, uh, but they definitely reflect this new orientation that's shaking up a lot of our traditional allies around the world. Well, to your point, he was on Fox and Friends uh, November 9th. This is Lieutenant General Flynn. What should Iran, Russia, uh, and maybe even Syrian President Assad know about a Donald Trump foreign policy? Well, I'll tell you what, it's going to be one that leads from the front. You cannot have a complex, uncertain world that we have and have a depleted military. No strength. Uh, he didn't get into the details, as you mentioned. Well, those there. are the big questions, though, because yeah. Assad sees Donald Trump's election as a positive thing. So does Putin. And at least in Syria, the United States will be on the side of Iran if they side with Assad and Russia. Tom. Yeah, well, one of the interesting things about Syria at the moment is you've actually seen the Russians continue this aggressive campaign against Aleppo, which to me suggests they're not quite sure about Trump. Uh, if they thought very confidently that he was going to be in their you know, back pocket, as it were, they would wait simply and sort of build some consensus, look, we're conceding, and then go at that point. One of the things that's interesting about General Flynn, I spoke to someone at JSOC who used to serve uh, with Flynn at JSOC. Special uh, Operations Command. Exactly, yeah, Joint Special Operations Command, who said that uh, Flynn's nickname there was the fire hose, in this, and, and not in a good way, that he had a reputation uh, for going off the rails a little bit, being a bit of a bully to uh, subordinates, and that if he wasn't tempered specifically into a task, that there would be some difficulties. And I think you see that in terms of some of the concerns people are expressing. Yeah, the most important thing in that job is the trust in between the president and the and national security the agency process. Right. Um, any red flags here for, obviously, Flynn does not need to be confirmed. Uh, you mentioned Pompeo, Sessions. No, I think, um, as we saw in the clip uh, from the Chris Wallace interview with Chuck Schumer, I think Democrats would like to make an issue of Jeff Sessions' nomination, would, would like to have a fight, uh, despite the fact that he's a colleague, despite the fact that he's a senator, because they want to highlight these Although that does give issues. you additional uh, points when you have a Senate confirmation, if they're coming from your yes. group, the senators. It, it usually does. I expect that in the end it will, but I think that Democrats will prepare for a big fight because they think they can exact some political uh, price for having chosen Jeff Sessions, given what he said in the past. Just a, a comment on Mike Flynn for a minute. I think Mara's right to raise the, the questions about Russia. Certainly we'll hear more about that. 
It also shouldn't be, it should be more than just an asterisk, asterisk that he was right about Al-Qaeda and ISIS. He was in the intelligence community, one of the only voices in the intelligence community, sounding the alarms in 2012, 2013, 2014 about the rise of Al-Qaeda, the continued uh, proliferation of, of Al-Qaeda, the growth of Al-Qaeda offshoots, including ISIS. It turns out the guy was right. I mean, the New York Times wrote a profile of him today and had that literally as a parenthetical. That's not a small thing to have been Right, right about the enemy in the global war on terror. Pushing up against the administration that was trying to diminish exactly. the, the ISIS Al Qaeda threat and um, essentially saying it wasn't wasn't a big deal. And I, and I think, you know, that's absolutely right. And he has that reputation. He earned it uh, correctly. But I, I think it does show that there is controversy still surrounding him from the right. Yes, Russia is the big motivator on that. But these other issues, if, if those. If it was purely about that record of predicting and assessing and pushing the administration, I, I think he would be a shoo-in, but he isn't, and, and well, so there is that. It doesn't yeah. have to be a shoe-in. Well, well, yeah. But he needs not that, yeah. There's no yeah. confirmation. Yeah. Yeah, cool. All right, I want to go forward, uh, and a couple of the big picks that are coming, Mara. Uh, Secretary of State, we're hearing all kinds of names. Rudy Giuliani still uh, in the mix here, even though uh, you know there are all kinds of stories, whether his chances were diminished or not. He still apparently wants it. Uh, John Bolton, Senator Bob Corker from Tennessee, David Petraeus, and now Mitt Romney on this list, uh, who really? Donald Trump meets, meets with right, tomorrow. Meets with tomorrow. The most interesting thing there is the Rudy Giuliani versus Mitt Romney. Rudy Giuliani was the absolute most loyal, loyal soldier to, to Donald Trump. After the Access Hollywood tape, he was out there more than anyone else. Even, even Mike Pence went to ground at that point. Um, and he is, we heard earlier, he could have whatever he wanted, and he wants state. But Mitt Romney has a different world view. Mitt Romney, remember, famously said Russia was the number one threat. Geopolitical the threat, States. right. Geopolitical threat. And he has a very different world view than Donald Trump and the kind of soft on Russia, whatever we want to call them, guys around him. That would be an interesting pick uh, if he went with Mitt Romney. That yeah. would send a really big message that he wants to have different views. rimals, different views, reaching out to the establishment who shunned him. And don't forget, Donald Trump has a long memory. He doesn't like to forgive. Mitt Romney was one of his most prominent detractors. If not the, the most, most prominent. prominent. Defense Secretary, let's look at this list. Uh, we mentioned Senator Tom Cotton from Arkansas. Uh, Senator Kelly Ayotte's name had come out. Uh, she lost that Senate uh, re-election bid in New Hampshire. Uh, Jack Keane, who we know well here, former general, um, and James Mattis's name, uh, former Marine general, has popped up, and David Petraeus today uh, has come up as well. Uh, Steve, that list. That's a heck of a list. Um, I would be surprised if James Mattis, who's now out at the Hoover Institution um, writing books and doing sort of big thinking, would, would come back, uh, but certainly that would be greeted with cheers and applause from the, the rank and file military, particularly the Marine Corps, uh, because of who he is and the reputation that he has. Um, Jack Keane, as you say, sort of speaks for himself. I do think Tom Cotton is getting serious consideration here. Uh, he's young, but talk about a resume. I mean, Tom Cotton has, has uh, he served, he uh, has, has studied these things. He distinguished himself very early, first as a member of the House, then as a member of the Senate, as a, uh, an outspoken proponent of American power and somebody who understands the use of American power sort of well beyond his years. I will say that the Pentagon, having covered it for six and a half years, is a massive mm. bureaucracy. And uh, you wonder whether you need to have someone who has run something before, whether it be a company or something big. Right. I mean, I think one of the interesting things is with Mattis that he does have that, you know, that the, the warrior scholar is his sort of reputation. And, and so he would be very popular. He was also the command, CENTCOM commander. Um, so he has managerial experience within DOD. The question is, how much does he want to embrace that bureaucracy? I mean, Bob Gates, for example, former defense secretary said, you know, you couldn't drag me back to Washington to deal with it because I think by far it's the hardest thing. The, the question here, though, is one of the interesting things from the secretary of state even if we talk about Giuliani and Romney as sort of different elements of the Trump campaign, both of them are very popular abroad. And I think that would be another example. I could imagine that sort of the foreign allies would be very, very happy with either of them because it would suggest that this is someone they have experience of uh, and can engage with.